Hello from LPL Financial. Welcome to The Talking Point. I'm your host, Quincy Crosby. Good morning, everyone. This is Quincy Crosby. This is The Talking Point. And today it is Friday, August 4th, rather than Monday, August 7th. So when we look at the market this week, the week that we're in now, uh, we had uh, important uh, earnings, Amazon and Apple. The market was waiting for that. Let me just go over that. Uh, Amazon uh, knocked it out of the park. Uh, remember, they've had tremendous amount of layoffs, particularly in the office uh, area, what we call the white-collar workers, uh, setting the stage for a, a, you know, a solid backdrop for a positive surprise, and, and certainly they did. And their guidance was extremely strong, and the market is rewarding them. Apple came out as well. Now, Statistically, the second quarter, remember we're in the second quarter earnings season, even though we're in the third quarter, we always look back. This uh, Apple statistically does not have a particularly strong second quarter. Uh, it, it be, simply because holiday sales, have, uh, you know, expectations have not kicked in and so on. Nonetheless, uh, they did disappoint, but they disappointed in terms of the uh, hardware, right? Uh, although I want to have an asterisk here in a minute. But in terms of the subscriptions, that did extremely well. And why are the subscriptions so important? It's because, you know, it's something that's taken out of your, uh, your account every single month. Uh, you don't have to worry about seasonality. Uh, and that is something that is important to Apple. So it, it was strong, but still the market is concerned about those, uh, those iPhone sales. Now here's the asterisk. Uh, it is they sold uh, quite a bit in China. That's interesting because I'm going to plug this into something else. Uh, we saw in China that consumer spending has ticked up a bit uh, in the last month. And we saw it in terms of folks going out to eat. I also uh, mentioned that we've seen it show up in some American companies there. The Starbucks, for example, pointed out they're seeing more foot traffic in China and, and more purchases. And the same thing with McDonald's. Well, we now know from hearing from, uh, from Apple, Chinese consumers have been buying Apple phones. So there you go. I thought I would put that in. But nonetheless, the market was not a, a, at all happy with, uh, with, with the slight miss in the, in the hardware. And it was a bit more than a slight miss. But again, the second quarter uh, is typically not its strongest quarter. Also, Apple, the $3 trillion company, has just lost that uh, status as the market, uh, you know, is, is, is pulling it back a bit. And overall, I do want to add that this market has been quite discerning. It is not afraid to punish companies don't, that miss on the guidance, that miss on revenue growth. Uh, it doesn't mean that the companies can't, you know, come back and, and, and push up. In many times that we've seen with big tech, many of the analysts come back in and say, whoa, now that the share price is and we're, we're going to put an, a, a stronger target for that company. But not, nonetheless, overall, during this earnings season, we have been strongly surprised at how well companies are doing. Remember, we are in an earnings recession, and this would be the third quarter that we are in an earnings recession. However, it is becoming less extreme. And if we take out energy, the energy sector, because remember, oil prices had come down quite dramatically in the last quarter, affecting uh, the um, energy complex names and uh, pushing them lower. Uh, the, the, the drawdown for the quarter in terms of overall earnings is not dire at all. And in terms of what we're looking for for 2024, all of the data are suggesting, and guidance, suggesting that we will be bottoming uh, this year and we will be looking for growth uh, in the early 2024. So in addition to all of this, in addition to all of this, we now have this negative seasonality. But what could affect it? What could turn things around and people say, well, August isn't that bad. It is next week's numbers, particularly the CPI report, consumer price index report that comes out on Thursday, August 10th. And of course, what we're looking for is for that core 
CPI number to come down at a faster pace. This is what is important. And then right after that, on Friday the 11th, we'll have the core PPI, the producer price index. And that has do, been doing very well with prices coming down. However, and I'm going to include this right here, this week we had the uh, Institute for Supply Management uh, report on the service sector. Remember, this is from uh, the. This is a huge report, and the service sector is the largest component of our economy. And what did we see in there? It was a strong report. We're still in expansion territory for the service sector. However, the prices paid component started to inch higher. This is not what you want to see. And so we're going to keep our eye on everything having to do with inflation as we move towards the Federal Reserve's meeting in September, September 20th. So next week is a really important week for, um, for all kinds of, of data, but obviously inflation-related data will be extremely important. As well, we have the Na National Federation of Independent Business on Tuesday, August 8th, the Optimism Index. And I always look at this and I always stress the importance of America's small businesses. They are the largest employers in our country. And the report I just saw recently shows that they have been hiring most of the uh, workers, obviously, in the service sector. Uh, and we want to see what they are saying in terms of their wages and, you know, how they're looking at prices in terms of prices they have to pay. And in this report, we'll also see whether or not they feel as though they need to raise their own prices in order to, you know, have a positive bottom line. So that's why it's an extremely important report when we dig down into all of the components. So again, next week, Consumer Price Index, absolutely, and then the Producer Price Index. And then on Friday, August 11th as well, we'll get the Preliminary Consumer Sentiment Report for August. Now, why this is important? As we have been seeing consumer confidence rising in all of the surveys. But in this particular report on Friday, uh, we are going to be paying attention to how do consumers see inflation in the years ahead? And why is that important? Because you don't want to see it become entrenched. If they start to see inflation creeping up and staying there over, say, three years or over five years. And what would force me to talk about that today? It's because gasoline prices are climbing higher across the country. And that has an important effect on how consumers view inflation, not just today, but in the future. And the Fed is watching that. Uh, you may say to me, well, Quincy, uh, you know, energy costs, gasoline costs, that, that's headline, right? Well, it may be headline, but this is the world we live in, right? We live in the headline. We live in food. We live in energy. And uh, the Fed, although they say they're only focused on the core, they are focused on how the headline numbers affect our view of overall inflation. So you, you, can't, you can't have a dichotomy between you know, two worlds of how the consumer views uh, what is going to happen. Also, I do want to report that we'll start to see the small business, the small companies uh, start to report. Many of them uh, have you know, more debt. It becomes more difficult for them. We want to see how, how they're handling that because rates have actually climbed higher and whether or not they're looking to um, take out loans if they've been turned down. So the small and mid-sized companies coming in over the next couple of weeks. Well, looking down the road, obviously, we're going to be very much focused on when we hear from the big retail names, and I'm talking about Home Depot, I'm talking about Lowe's, and the big one, Walmart, coming in and uh, in August uh, 15th, August 17th, and then Target. All of those are going to be extremely important in terms of how they view consumer spending and our consumer spending. What are, we, what are we buying? And in terms of uh, Walmart, what I'll be looking for is when they break down who is shopping there. Uh, it was interesting months ago now where a higher wage earners going into uh, Walmart buying food. Uh, the question is, are they buying higher margin uh, items? And then also what we want to hear when we do have those reports is the um, 
expectations for the holiday season. We are already hearing that expectations for back to school sales, which are going on right now, are lower than what the market had expected. And that typically is a harbinger for holiday sales. So we'll get a closer read on all of this uh, when we start to hear from the big uh, retail names. Last but very not least, if you are disappointed with Apple, have no fear because we have a big report coming out, but this won't be until August 23rd, and that will be NVIDIA. And why is that important? Because NVIDIA joined that exclusive club of the mega cap techniques. Remember, it's a semiconductor name. Uh, it is one that powers uh, the, um, the processors, and it is most closely aligned with artificial intelligence. And its last report from last quarter knocked it out of the park. I mean, the guidance was stupendous. What we want to see when they report is, are they still as optimistic as they were for the last, uh, the last uh, quarter's earnings announcements? Because it's extremely important, because this market has been powered, if you will, by the mega cap tech names. That said, we are also seeing a broadening in the market, and that is healthy. And so, again, we're going to watch to hear what we hear, what we have from the small and mid-cap names uh, as we go over the next uh, week or two. But keep in mind, seasonality is a hovering over this market, and seasonality statistically is not particularly good for the month of August and going into September. So, there's, but there's awful lot of catalysts, and next week's could very well be a positive catalyst. If that core CPI comes down, it will help underpin this market. Have a very good week. We will be back next week. Thank you again. This material was prepared by LPL Financial. It's for general information only and is not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. There is no assurance that the views or strategies discussed are suitable for all investors or will yield positive outcomes. Investing involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Any economic forecast set forth in the podcast may not develop as predicted and are subject to change. References to markets, asset classes, and sectors are generally regarding the corresponding market index. All indexes are unmanaged and cannot be invested into directly. Index performance is not indicative of the performance of any investment and do not reflect fees, expenses, or sales charges. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All information referenced in the podcast is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and broker dealer, member FINRA and SIPC. Insurance products are offered through LPL or its licensed affiliates. To the extent you are receiving investment advice from a separately registered independent investment advisor that is not an LPL affiliate, please note LPL makes no representation with respect to such entity. If your financial professional is located at a bank or credit union, please note Note that the bank or credit union is not registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor. Registered representatives of the LPL may also be employees of the bank or credit union. These products and services are being offered through LPL or its affiliates, which are separate entities from and not affiliates of the bank or credit union. Securities and insurance offered through LPL or its affiliates are not insured by the FDIC or NCUAA or any other government agency, not bank or credit union guaranteed, not bank or credit union deposits or obligations, and may lose value.